Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. I'm filming it in the morning though, because I have to, I've, I'm going to be tied up all evening, uh, probably. So um, it's going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to stop what I'm doing or I'm, what I'm going to be doing with that RV giving a mechanical mechanics assessment. So um, I'm going to get the videos filmed now so that they, they're ready and they're ready to upload so I'm not late putting it out. So I'm filming Evening Devotion in the morning, right after Morning Devotion, and Daniel I'm filming next. So this, tonight we're going to be reading out of Matthew 12, 20, and I, and I say all that for, for context. In full disclosure, that's what's happening. I don't, I'm not going to try to deceive anybody as to what I'm doing. I'm just being honest with you guys. This is what's going on. Matthew 12, 20, a bruised reed shall he not break, and a smoking flax shall he not quench. I've been hoping for this one because this is a real good one. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory. We're going to talk about this. Let's get some context. God's chosen servant, verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Yet he warned them not to make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, and we've covered this, till it was filled, fulfilled by the prophet Isaiah, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Now, that's a two-edged sword statement right there. Justice as in hope and justice as in judgment. Some hope, some judgment. <laughs> Verse 19, he will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. God hasn't spoken in 2,000 years. People are like, I can hear from God. No, you won't because the Bible says he's not going to speak. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. It's not going to happen. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. Okay, so there's a lot here. <coughs> now below that we get into a completely different subject, so we're going to focus on this for a second. A bruised reed he will not break. What is that? Now, I know verse 19 is talking about Jesus too, but what is that? A bruised reed. Well, if you if you take a you go down to the water's edge and you've got the reeds there, and you, you know what they look like, little reeds growing up. We used to pull them out and sling them at each other and throw them out in the pond. But if you squish it with your fingers, it makes a bruise there. Now, what that happens is it breaks the fibers inside. Some of them are still connected, but it's weak now. It's not strong to be able to handle the wind. If a strong wind comes, it just bowls over because it's got a weak spot now. A smoking flax he will not quench. What is a smoking flax? Well, if you take flax, which is, you get the flax seed from there, that stuff, it's all the fuzzy stuff, it's smoking. And when it's smoking, it, you get to put it in the water to put it out because it'll just keep burning inside of it because of, the, of what, it's, what it's made of. So the bruised reed is someone who's a believer, but they're struggling greatly. Having a hard time growing in faith and developing in faith. And possibly even somebody who's backslidden because the world and the people have beat them up so much. A smoking flax is someone whose fire is just barely burning. The fire in their heart, the spiritual fire, is just lightly smoldering. You ever gone out and, and burned a uh, brush in that moment? We've been doing that for days till the burn, burn ban came on. And we would go out there and look at the fire in the evening to make sure it was out and there'd be just ashes and you couldn't see anything. But every now and then a little bit of a little whiff of smoke would come up. That fire was just barely smoldering underneath those ashes. See what Jesus is going to do is he's going to go over there and he's going to do like we do. We want to see how much of the fire is left. Rake over that top of that and let air get in there and it kicks the coals up and you see all this red. It's actually quite beautiful when it's in the dark. All this red in there and you blow on it and it flame comes up or as soon as the air hits it, flame comes up. Expose it. The bruised reed. 
How do you keep that bruised reed from breaking over? You bind it up. You can put a popsicle stick there and lightly tape it to it. You can put a piece of another reed on there and, and connect it to it. So it, it holds it up and keeps it going, keeps it standing upright. Sometimes when you're doing like the, the, the cattails, there's people that raise cattails because you can, you can actually eat them. Um, you can make bread out of the pollen on the ends of them when they flower and the root is edible. And so you'll go out to the pond and you got a whole bunch of them growing and some of them have broken over. Well, they stand them back up and they bind them up. So they stay upright until they're ready to be pulled off of there. So they don't die and drop the, the cattail head into the water. Most people don't know about that. <clears throat> the amazing thing about this is that this is talking about believers who are struggling. So this is why we can't be judgmental about somebody unless they show clear signs they are apostate. Clear signs that they are in blasphemy. But we warn everybody regardless. Because there are people out there who are just barely going to do it. They believe they're just barely able to stand because they are bruised. They believe, but they are just barely able to do anything because their fire has all but gone out. The Lord is going to stir them up. If you go back and read in Isaiah, I forget where it's at. I, I did a whole study on Isaiah. But if you go back and read Isaiah, it says he's going to bind up the bruised reed. He's going to Reignite the smoking flax. So you used to use flax because of the fuzzy nature of it. Use that to start fires. You can even carry fire in, a, in, a, in flax. Get it going and then wrap it up loosely and you can carry it. And take it wherever you're going to go. And then when you're ready, you take it out and you open it up, blow on it. Whew, got a fire. So he's going to take those believers who are struggling and he's going to revive them. Now, remember what Jesus said in two different places. He says, some will enter heaven like one escaping the flames. Some on that day, the day of the Bema Seat judgment, will suffer great loss, but they shall be saved, yet so as through fire. So there's going to be people who are just barely going to make it, but the Lord will not let any get lost. None. So this particular verse actually causes you to look at people much differently in their faith. Now, again, some, some are clearly apostate or not believers at all. Others, it's hard to tell. It may be that they're just hovering in the outer skirts. They're unable to stand. They're unable to come out of where they're at. The Lord will deliver them. The Lord will save them. And so we have to show love to everybody because we don't know who's who. In fact, nobody knows who's who. Nobody can tell directly. We may know individually of ourselves, but it has not yet been revealed who the sons of man are, or the sons of God are. In fact, in other places, it says that all of creation waits expectantly for the revealing of the sons of God. That won't happen until the rapture. Then everybody, everybody will know. They're going to know all the ones who were alive on the earth at that time, and they're going to know all the ones who were in their graves at that time, because the graves are going to break open. They're going to know. People are going to go... Where's my love? Where's my love? They're going to drive past cemeteries and all these holes in the ground. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Who dug all these up? Wait a minute. Those haven't been dug up. These were opened. What? And then it'll start to set in. But no matter who it is, he's going to get everyone that is his. What is weaker than a bruised reed or a smoking flax? A reed that groweth in the fen or marsh. Let but the wild buck light upon it. A wild duck light upon it, and it snaps. Let but the foot of man brush against it, and is bruised and broken. Every wind that flits across the river moves it to and fro. You can conceive of nothing more frail or brittle, or whose existence is more in jeopardy than a bruised reed. It takes very little to break it over. Then look at the smoking flax. What is it? It has a spark within it, it is true, but it is almost smothered. An infant's breath might blow it out. Nothing has a more precarious existence than its flame. Weak things are here described, yet Jesus says of them, the smoking flax, I will not quench. 
the bruised reed I will not break. Some of God's children are made strong to do mighty works for him. This is true. God has his Samsons here and there who can pull up gates, or Gaza's gates and carry them to the top of the hill. He has a few mighties who are lion-like men, but the majority of his people are a timid, trembling race. This is true. That's why we can't look down on others. Because not everybody is called to do the same thing. This is why I don't look down on anybody who might, like we talked about here just a couple of days ago, let's shut down their channel. There's a lot of reasons why it would happen. I don't look negatively on anybody who does that. This, what we do here is hard. You've got to be hard-headed. You've got to be stiff-necked to stand up against the nonsense that these people spew and belch out and puke out. They're animals. They deserve cages. But they're free. So I don't anyone. I don't look down uh, look down on or think negatively against anybody who stops doing some form of ministry because it's hard to do it. It's not easy. It takes a toll. But the Lord strengthens us. The Lord keeps us going. And so instead, I pray for them because who am I to look down on on the Lord's servant? Who am I to cast doubt or negativity on the Lord's servant? I can't. The question is: Is that person the Lord's servant? So if there's somebody who isn't, obviously you speak against that because they're wrong if they're sharing false doctrine or preaching heresies. There are those out there who have very, very weak and struggling faith. We can't look down on them either. In fact, we have to show them patience and try to help strengthen them. That's one of the things I try to do on this channel. I admit, and I've admitted over the last four and a half years, my channel isn't for new Christians, but I welcome new Christians that they may start to learn. But this channel, the way I do this content is designed for that. But you're welcome here because I want everybody to grow. Because the more we grow, the more we can help other people in our individual lives. Maybe not in this type of ministry that I do or in a pulpit, but in their homes, in the streets, and in the way the Lord has given them to do it. So we all have a part to play. One plants, one waters, God provides the increase. They are like starlings, that's a little bird, frightened at every passerby, a little fearful flock. If temptation comes, they are taken like birds in a snare. If trial threatens, they are ready to faint. Their frail skiff is tossed up and down by every wave. They are drifted along like a seabird on the crest of the billows, weak things without strength, without wisdom, without foresight. Now, remember, this isn't necessarily a negative towards those people. This is just where they're at. Remember, we all started there. Yet, weak as they are, and because they are so weak, they have this promise made specially to them. This promise that we just read that comes out of Isaiah is to those people, not to us. We're not the bruised reeds. We're not the smoking flax. To them. It's our duty to help them. Herein is grace and graciousness. Herein is love and loving kindness. How it opens to us the compassion of Jesus, so gentle, tender, considerate. If Jesus is going to be that way to them, we must be that way to them. Because they are our brothers and our sisters, regardless if they are in the faith. Regardless, if they are in the faith, they are our brothers and sisters. We need never shrink back from his touch. We need never fear a harsh word from him, though he might well chide us for our weakness. He rebuketh not. Bruised reeds shall have no blows from him, and the smoking flax no dampening crowns. You enter heaven, you will enter heaven victorious. You will not regret going to heaven. And that, that's been a doctrine that's been, been preached. Well, if you do all this, I mean, you know, the Lord's not going to be happy with you when you get to heaven. Wrong. You're entering heaven victorious. You're entering heaven triumphant. You may not have anything as a reward, but you're not, you're not going to be upset about it because that is where you ended up. That's how it was, it was going. It may be that's where the Lord brought you. <laughs> There's still some mysteries there we don't fully understand, but it's not so you can sit around and be sad. You're in heaven. You're saved for eternity. Should never be a negative. 
You're saved, you're saved. Doesn't matter what rewards you have. Some are gonna have more reward than others. There are people that are gonna have a billion times more reward than I'll ever have. I'm hoping just to have a little bit of reward. Something that I can give back to the Lord. But to have heaven is a win. They, there's people out there that would have you think that if you, you're not doing enough, if you're not uh, acting right, if you don't have a ministry, if you're not doing all these things, that you're not, you know, pleasing to the Lord. And when you get to heaven, you'll get to heaven. But he's going to be disappointed in you. Wrong. You made it to heaven. That was the whole goal. Everything else is something completely different. Salvation stands by itself. You're saved. That's it. You're saved. Everything else is that you do, everything else that you live, everything else that you experience, all that stuff is all involving reward, has nothing to do with your salvation. In fact, most of those things you do because you're saved. The whole point is to get to heaven. Everything after that is a blessing from the Lord. And so if you're relating to that smoking flax, if you're relating to that bruised reed, and there are many Christians that do, rejoice. Rejoice that there is a promise from the Lord given specifically to you. I know you're listening. You don't comment. You don't comment because you've been attacked on other channels. People have worked on you and worn you down and those other in other comments attack you for no reason. People attack you in your in your everyday life and treat you badly because you're a Christian, because you want to talk about the Lord for no reason. And so you've been bruised. You've been quenched. I know you're watching. I know you're listening. You're scared and you're worried. Don't be. If you are hearing this video today, I'm telling you specifically, as my brother and sister, I'm telling you specifically, that promise was for you. It was only for you, not for anyone else. And the Lord is telling you, I will not break you if you're bruised. I will not quench you if you are quenched. If you are just smoking, barely an ember burning of the fire of the Spirit within you, I will not quench it. But instead, I will welcome you gladly into heaven because all we needed to do was get to heaven. Everything else is substantial, substantially superficial compared to that. It's all for the glory of God anyway. So if that's who you are, if this resonates with you, rejoice. You are saved. And if you are saved, you have everything you need. Jesus Christ. Go to the Lord and ask him if what I'm telling you is true. He'll reveal it to you. He'll reveal it to you in his word. He'll reveal it to you in your heart. Go ask him. But you are not lost because you're weak. You are not excluded because you are destitute of works. Your salvation is singular and stands by itself, and it is all in the hands of the Lord. You are engraved on the palm of the Lord's hand. Nobody will remove that. You are his. You belong to him, and you always will. He bought you with his blood. You are precious to him, because that, that's a high price. He paid a high price for us. And so he will not let a single one go. So if you're listening today, and this, is, this sounds like you, you're listening, be blessed. Be blessed that you have something... 99% of the world evidently does not have, <laughs> if you look at the numbers. Maybe 98%. They say there's 2.7 billion plus Christians in the world. Um, when you start looking at all the false doctrines, false religions, and all that stuff, no. I've managed to whittle it down to like 3% of that. 3%, less than 700 million out of 8 plus billion people in the world. Less than 3% of them are real believers. Less than 3% of us are real believers. Terrible thing. But if you're a believer, you're one of those 3%. One of those 3%. The Lord is coming for you. Hebrews 9.28, he is coming apart from sin for salvation a second time for us only. For those eagerly waiting for him. So what you're enduring isn't going to last long. And you will stand in glory. 
and see him as he is, just like the rest of us. And we'll all get to meet, we'll all get to see each other, we'll all get to greet each other, and we will all get to dwell together with our Lord forever in heaven. Amen. Beautiful, wonderful, incredible. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.